Welcome, subscribers, Vorians, Steve Vetteral. Today's the 11th of November. CMA, your risk manager, talked to you a little about risk this morning. Um, let's do a quick sound check uh, screen. You should see the risk disclosure PowerPoint screen. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. If you could, please put something in the chat window. Q&A window is open. Questions, let me know. <clears throat> I am not trading this week. Yes. There are some of our software that have actually done really well this week. I'm going to talk to you about that. But let's go through risk disclosure real quickly. Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Trading on margin and utilizing leverage can carry an even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market, or for that matter, any markets uh, that involve risk <clears throat> or any of the software that we offer alerts, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, or risk tolerance. <clears throat> There's a possibility that you could lose your entire account if you're not paying attention to that stuff. So let's take a look at the risk disclosure. Yes, I finally updated the screen with the help of Mariska, our master of compliance. So thank you, Mariska. If you are sharing any of your results from using our software tools or essentially the stuff in the Facebook groups, please do not use the term company recommended settings. Voria Prime is not have any company recommended settings. We are not a financial advisory firm. We license software that you can use. Software does come out of the box with settings that can be adjusted based upon developers and or yourself and or my calls once I learn the software. So um, any settings that I am sharing or the developer settings that are not company recommended settings, essentially the call is for educational purposes only. So with that being said, just the closing out the slides here, um, let me show you guys, switch over to a new screen share. Let's take a look at the Forex factory. I got I get questions on how I filter. I just uncheck these two boxes right here. I only care about red folder events. I don't really care about anything else. Obviously, we have a big week. Today's election day in the United States. If you have not voted and you are registered to vote, go vote. Outside of that, we have a whole bunch of news events this week, um, including a... You know, we have no idea when the election results are going to come in, right? They could come in tonight. It could be a few days from now. I mean, who knows if they can be contested or not? I don't think so from what I'm hearing. Uh, but again, I could be wrong. I am certainly no pundit. Uh, I was going to run a poll today, but I couldn't get the darn poll thing running in Zoom. <laughs> so, uh, but really, I want to know. Um, I want, and if you guys just, if everybody could just go vote, and you guys are probably sick of hearing about polls, but if we vote with our honesty, we can actually have a poll that's correct here today, right? Uh, but put in a V if you're running variable, this is in the chat window. Put in an A or an Alex if you're running Alex. Uh, put in an A, V if you're going to run both, okay? Or if you're going to run Gearbox, just put in a GB. Or put in that way, I can sort of get a gauge as to who's doing what. I know it's a small group today, and quite frankly, I know everybody's, especially in the US, they got a lot better things to do today with <clears throat> homeschooling and all this stuff, fun stuff around waiting in lines at voting polls. But um, so I'm going to make this call real quick and short and sweet to the point here. <clears throat> but uh, just go ahead and you know put that in. So V for variable, if you're going to be running an A and a V, which is a more diversified that we recommend um, or if you're going to be running like a variable in a gearbox <clears throat> or if you're just sort of keeping your powder dry keep in mind you can run demos this week i just turned off the live accounts <clears throat> even some of our bigger ones that are running the uh, high volatility settings especially the big 25k euro account we've turned off some of the currencies <clears throat> I took a cut small loss and some of the stuff here and draw it out on usd jpy um, but essentially we don't really want a lot of exposure. You know, I could be completely wrong. We had a big move up obviously in the Euro cause the dollar sold off. <clears throat> um, maybe cause they were getting closer to putting our country more in debt with another round of stimulus, which is devaluing for the currency. Uh, but you know, who really knows at this point it could just be election jitters inside global markets. So I'll talk a little bit about all that, but I wanted to just address before I go into some of these polling results. Um, just look, look, let's just have a discussion from the standpoint of everybody in the audience being a five-year-old. Okay. I talk a lot about this. It's something that I've had to adjust, 
uh, my education levels because I've with most of what I do in the educational side of uh, my mentoring business FXES Trader, I'm dealing with really really high level futures traders, and many of them are exceptionally successful in equities and option markets, um, and they want to learn how to train futures and or forex manually. Um, so I have a, a lot of high level discussions. Probably some of my biggest faults, if you will, um, could be the my my lack of willing to just just dumb it down, right? Just be real macro, be real specific um, to a audience that in many cases with our subscribers, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, by the way, but they just do not have a lot of experience in the financial markets, which is totally fine. You know, if you guys have the right mentors, you could be as green as possible in this area. It's really not that big of a deal. Why? Because if you seek out the right mentors and or the right software to trade <clears throat> and or the right financial advisors for your other investments outside of Forex, um, and you really don't have to be an expert. You know, just, just seek out uh, those that can assist you in all of that, you know, you can always ask me questions on this stuff, financially planning related as well. Just send me an email at federal Um, but since a lot of variable has done really well, um, since essentially for lack of a better, um, analogy version five is out. Okay. So make sure you upgrade, reset your VPS, all that fun stuff. If you got any problems with that, put a ticket in, in the back. Um, but <clears throat> I, I think that on days and, and variable certainly had a couple of days like this in March when the pandemic broke out globally. I mean, it caught the right side of some trades and just sailed in performance. Okay. Please do not let that cloud your judgment or build what Ryan referred to in our group today as a drunken or a inebriated euphoric feeling towards the software's ability to perform in a volatile market, okay? It just got lucky. I think it got lucky in March. I think Desan would probably tell you it got lucky. Told me that's what happened, right? Now, a lot of investment people would say, well, I'd rather be lucky than good. Yeah, that's true. But the problem with luck is it could run out quite quickly. So <clears throat> what I always, you know, and it's just like the, the same thing with, any investment, I don't care if it's in a piece of art or a, a property, whether it be commercial or residential, um, you know, there's always risk involved to the purchase of any asset for investment purposes, regardless of what it is. So you have to look to see what are the risks, right? Can you afford to lose the money? A lot of people will be like, oh, you know, I, I ran a demo for three or four months. It did fantastic. I went live with 20 grand, which, you know, they never admit to you they can ill afford to lose, thinking it's just going to go straight up. And then it goes down. So I want you to think about before you go live, I want you to just sit there and <clears throat> do that Michael Jordan envisioning thing that was so successful for him, where you just see him sitting on the bench, a lot of the other players yakking away. Jordan was just staring at the court. I mean, in just a zone that you probably couldn't have broken unless you jumped on top of him, right? So I want you to think about that zone. And this is more of a, a psychological or, a, or some sort of mental exercise surrounding risk. And I want you to picture if that account got cut in half. Because <clears throat> you were euphoric on one side. You went all in, right? It was money you could ill afford to lose. And it got cut in half. I want you to truly think about what you would feel, how you would feel, right? Be honest with yourselves. Would you be completely mentally ill, right? If that is the case, you should probably scale back the live accounts that you're going to do, right? Or work up to it, right? Regardless of how big any institutional investor is, sovereign wealth funds, wealthy family offices, endowments, charities, you know, big organizations that have huge chunks of endowment money to invest, even at the best managers in their lineup could be the greatest hedge funds in sliced bread. They barely get a 4% allocation, maybe three, right? So use that same thinking or thought process when it comes to your investments. Now, a lot of people say, well, Steve, no, it's all great and good, but you know, I don't have that amount of wealth to spread out, right? And I get it, but you know, there's going to be some down days, regardless of how good our software is. It's going to be some down days that are going to be quite wrecking. 
Um, and I hope that <clears throat> that day never happens. I hope that the low drawdowns of some of our new software coming out continues to be the case. Um, but I always tell everybody, prepare for the worst. Right. And that's keeping your settings conservative, not putting a lot of money at risk, you know, not getting <laughs> inebriated, if you will, with the euphoric performance inside something. Right. Just scale the expectations back. Most of the discussions I've had uh, with clients and fellow financial advisors and, you know, I have a, a whole storm of people that are sort of caught wind as to what I'm doing. They're like, hey, what's the software? Show? And then I take most of the numbers that I show and I cut them like a quarter. Um, they're like, well, but you know, you're saying it only should do a quarter. Yep. Because what if the next year is only one tenth as good as this? Would that still be a great performance? And in investment land, it would be fantastic. Okay. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the results here. By the way, this, this, this conversation does dovetail into the diversification among our different software. So ideally, and I get it, people are uh, budget challenged in some cases to do this, but at a bare minimum, I would have two licenses going forward. If you can't afford that, bring in three people. You get them for free, <clears throat> or at least the one. All right, so mostly variable demo, good to see. <clears throat> variable. Okay, so looks like everybody on this call is on uh, variable, a few running both. Um, all right, cool. All right, let's take a look at the markets real quick. Um, I'm not going to have this call this long, you guys. So if you got any questions, type it in the Q and A. <clears throat> um, so. Just looking at the equity markets real quick, um, notice we bounced off of a very important support line, uh, which really hasn't carried over. But quite frankly, you can see how the green line um, <clears throat> can really just be extended across here. And we bounced off of, it's a bit better. yeah, there you go. Bounced off of this area of support down around. <clears throat> So this area is actually real important post-election for you equity folk. I'm not saying you take the entire 401k to cash um, unless you're really envisioning us swinging back down towards uh, the 2400 level or your IRA. Um, keep in mind, I would, be, <clears throat> I would be reticent if I didn't say that um, we could have, regardless of who gets in, uh, especially if there's more signaling with stimulus, we could have a pretty big rally. Uh, but the concern I have, regardless of who gets in, um, is once the music stops, how many chairs are going to be left over in this market? I think we have a correction coming. It could be till next summer. I, it, I could be dead wrong and we could absolutely rock it up. Uh, but we're usually going to be having to go back down probably and test some of these lower levels. So if you're sitting in caps looking for a lower level like we are for a, a ton of capital let your hearts not be troubled i'm pretty sure it's going to offer itself so going over to the dxy now um it's a daily chart each one of these candles represents one day we're going to make this a little bit bigger here we go <clears throat> Okay, these are, I get a lot of questions on this. These lines are squeeze zone lines, all the red and orange stuff. They represent just support resistance levels that are dynamic uh, on the chart going forward. Anything you see as a black or green line is from myself. Squeeze zones are, <clears throat> were authored by Dasan. Um, he is empirical FX on trading view if you need to know. In any case, so we had a, a pretty big, Resistance up here on the red line, just under 94, that's pushed us down. Um, I don't attribute this to anything <laughs> other than selling pressure, right? So I really, I, I don't read, I'm not reading in anything. I, I probably won't be reading in anything too dramatically um, for at least a couple of days, depending upon the outcome. Uh, can we get uh, an accurate count and it can be completed in, in an orderly fashion? <clears throat> All right, let me answer this question, see if I can. If I can't answer this question, looks like I may not be able to. Uh, maybe I could ask the group. Um, in all fairness to Ginger, 
Uh, her question is, can you please describe how you would run the two licenses versus just running a platinum access pass running multiple software? So if the platinum is in the budget or if you've you know brought a whole bunch of people in and you're getting a, a better deal on platinum or free, um, ideally I would have a demo running for variable and a, and a live account. I would have a demo running um, for Gearbox um, and I would have a live account running on either Alexander or Einstein. Uh, and or you could have four demos. Um, I would not be live on Gearbox just yet. Okay. <clears throat> so, and that's probably my own ignorance because I haven't had enough of an opportunity to see it running. Um, so <clears throat> stay tuned on that. I may change my tune on that. <sighs> Do keep in mind that if you're not putting a lot of time into trading this week, I absolutely would get caught up in everything in the back office, there's changes coming to, um, you know, the way new comp plans out for those who want to be affiliates. Um, and there's also a whole bunch of changes coming to ranks and stuff. The team, I know for a fact, um, especially on the technology side, <clears throat> um, I've been working just a ridiculous amount of time to try and get uh, everything all done. So including all the licenses straightened out, but Ideally, I'd be running demos first. If you've never run a demo, that would be rule number one. Um, you know, and <clears throat> again, don't let that euphoria because you you probably heard this week. You know, <laughs> variables done pretty darn well the last two weeks, but um, it's also done pretty darn well the last eleven months. So, you know, <clears throat> how I would read the tea leaves and in, in that that uh, and those hieroglyphics on the wall essentially would be. There's plenty of fantastic trades in front of you, right? Don't feel the pressure to go live. You know, maybe it'll allow you the time to save some more money, right? All right, let's cover here. So let's take a look at the Euro US dollar. Again, obviously, this is the inversion correlation of what's going on in the DXY as this thing has moved back up again. Support lies just underneath its current level, right in that 1630 area, all the way down to right around 1600. So we break this for the folks accepting trades and whatever software on um and you know we break below this essentially with the dollar just um you know be rocketing down so if this was taking it up i i'd have no problem taking trades on both sides of this whole tight range that we've been bouncing into but if we break below this and it's anything significant especially if we close or put a candle underneath this important support level probably going to see the 14 level pretty quickly. That looks like it's just wanting to auction all the way down to find potential buyers. <clears throat> you know, obviously if this thing's selling off DXY, which is against most odds, um, would be ripping completely higher. So we'd be above 94.75 level. Okay, court. Let's read this question. I like it. <clears throat> um, I am new and spending a lot of time learning Forex. Great to see. Look at that. Court setting the tone. <clears throat> Daisy is exceptionally good at what she does. I am on a demo account, still been running V and I've closed all of my positions this week as my V runs. Well, you know, if you're running a demo, you can keep it running, you know? <clears throat> at least you'll understand if we do have some absolute wildness. This kind of already had a little bit, right? Um, you'll see how the demo operates during it. So I'd actually keep the demo running. Um, as my V runs, I'm trying to understand different strategies and making manual trades and making notes of my outcomes. Notice that V will leave trades open for many days sometimes. How long would you typically keep I, I'm not going to step in front court of V or Einstein or Alexander and say that I'm smarter than the software. Uh, but if you do want a deep dive, you can look on my Telegram channel. I put out almost a page of strategy surrounding turning off and on trades, and it would depend on a lot of factors. Uh, but I can tell you that that strategy comes with a huge caveat. Um, and that is that much of what we've put together in that, along with some of the traders uh, and leaders that helped me construct that piece, um, you're kind of saying you're smarter than the software if you're in there, if you're in there doing that. So just know that, but you can read the piece. It goes into a deep dive on that. <clears throat> 
Um, so for those that have a question around the Daisy Duncan's training in the back office, um, it's, it's there. Um, keep in mind that <laughs> in the back office, I'll show you guys. I was just in the account. So once you log into the back office here, um, you're going to see AP Academy. See this right here on the dashboard? So just click on AP Academy. <clears throat> now give it a moment. Now keep in mind, guys, this whole chunk of the dashboard um, is being adjusted around. Okay, so you want to walk through the onboarding. Okay, EA Academy looks like it's going to be. See, these are not, doesn't look like they're live yet. See how you can't click on them. So once they get this all up and they've been shifting this around here and there, um, looks like you should be able to get in um, at some point here, hopefully in the next couple of days and, and go through that. Keep in mind the absolute monumental task it has been for our developers, um, led by Bill Wynn, as you see here. The guy's always wearing a suit. I love it. <laughs> by the way, shout out to, see if I can find it. <clears throat> um, shout out to Iman. Uh, one of our developers has been working uh, just a ton, actually had a, a really bad heart attack. Um, he's actually okay. Uh, looks like he's. Uh, <clears throat> going to be on the road to a quick recovery. So we wish him well, but um, as unfortunately as we <clears throat> learn in life, health conditions of overworkness um, can lead to some issues. So take care of yourselves, folks. All right. Um, <clears throat> so any questions that I've gotten in the past, um, how can one deal with uh, drawdowns on Einstein on live accounts? Um, I'm going to ask the question to Abdul is, you know, what have you done um, to mitigate risk? So this is sort of a question I'm going to throw the ball back into your court. I need you to type up a little answer for me while I'm going through the rest of this stuff um, because I want to see what you've done. So just expound upon if you've done anything. Okay. And more importantly, if the money is uh, risk capital only as far as trading, can you afford to lose it? Um, and somebody may know, actually, hang on a second, let me open up the chat window. Somebody may know, uh, that's actually really good. Um, babypips.com is really good as well. You guys, I would go through the other stuff first. How long have you been live trading, Abdul? Yeah, just because I know everybody's got stuff to do and I need to end this call because uh, i got a bunch of other things going on. I'm going to put in, uh, Abdul, grab a pen. I want you to write this down. This is my email address. <laughs> I get that right. Svedotovoryprime.com. Why don't you just send me an email? Hook the account up to my FX book, please. Don't have everything locked so I can actually see what's going on. I'll give me a screenshot also of your settings so I can take a closer look at what's going on. Please be detailed in the email. Anybody that sends me an email, um, I can't do the right help for you if I can't get an accurate diagnosis that's going on. So just pretend you're in the doctor's office, right? And I, I can't read your minds magically to see what's ailing you, right? In this case, what's ailing your financial accounts. Um, so just be detailed with it. And uh, a lot of times I find that the settings were incorrect. I'd say well over 80% of the time when I get these emails, <clears throat> there's something that was missed. It may not have high volatility settings on Einstein or Alexander, right? That's step one. Those settings are all in the back office. They're all over my Telegram channel. So they're very easy to find those settings. That'd be the first place I'd start. But if you want, send me an email. You can do a little bit of a deeper dive when I get a chance. <clears throat> yeah, so here it goes. So Wayne, Wayne put in kind of what he did. <clears throat> Mm 
as Einstein. <clears throat> Keep in mind, the great thing about demo accounts, guys, if you're just playing around in this case for Wayne as Einstein, you know, it gives you a chance to make adjustments, right? Doing different things. You know, some of our software coming out is going to require a lot more work than other pieces of software. Einstein is definitely on the high part of that list. Um, you know, Gearbox is a refined uh, Einstein, right? <clears throat> it's going to require some learning. Variable, less learning, <clears throat> even less for Stratomus, especially since it only trades one currency. But I have no idea when that's going to be live and out. Just don't ask me. <laughs> or Neo. You know, we've got all, a lot of a lot of them to get on board. We've got a couple other pieces of software behind that as well. Um, and I think this is uh, going to be absolutely fabulous down the road with just multiple pieces of software. So <clears throat> I can't take the place, guys of the developers. I can't. At some point, I'll be much more up on it, um, but I'm going to stick to the macro themes, what's going on. Just take a quick peek, obviously, at the uh, GBPUSD. Now, obviously, this is rallying because the dollar selling off, right? Okay. There's a Euro USD. We got that. This is USD JPY, which is, I think we're going to be turning off on um, a couple of other live accounts, too, because it's looking like this thing just may break lower and go all the way down to the bottom of this channel. This could be ugly. And then there's my most hated currency, which quite frankly, I can never get a read on. <clears throat> so I'll just continue to play stupidity on the Euro JPY thing. But you can see where the levels are. The 121 areas. <clears throat> um, has got a hold. Or this thing's just going to rip probably down to May lows, down into the uh, 14 to 15 area is a big move <clears throat> so the email address is right there it's in the chat room if you guys don't know how to open up chat just go up into zoom click on more there's a chat window right there yeah, let me double check the rest of the q a all right so i answered those two Nobody's seeing the email? It's there. Let's try again. And maybe that's because it's to all panelists. So like a knucklehead, I should make it to everybody, right? So let's do it to everybody. All panelists and attendees. Boom. You guys see it? All right. <clears throat> Keep that email close to the cuff. Don't be sending me any crazy questions, right? One-liners rarely get responses from you guys. My mom was an English major. She was always like, Stevie, put down complete and concrete thoughts. <laughs> And I still only got a C in English in college, right? It was a brutally tough class. All right, cool. So <clears throat> I'm going to end it here. Unless anybody's got any other questions, send me an email. Wish everybody well. May the vote go in your favor, whatever side you vote with. But please do go out and vote. And um, what am I missing? Anything? Anything? Gold? Got a question on that? Nothing going on here in gold. <clears throat> tight, tight range. I think gold's waiting for us to get more devaluing in our currency before it moves higher again. <clears throat> um, zoom, check this out, you guys. First decent pullback in a while. So this thing's been a massive five bagger for myself and my clients. It's been a great stock. I do see this thing pulling way back though. So <clears throat> probably wouldn't want to get on board quite frankly unless the thing hit 275 just a heads up it's just basically a cut and half or from here <clears throat> but it can happen so all right cool thank you guys join us on saturday please spread the word of uh low risk in live accounts and spread the word of let's not get drunk and crazy with bananas performance expectations and think that that's going to be the case going forward 
My name is Steve Vetteral. I am the risk manager. Have a great week. See you guys Saturday. I think so.